Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, and a happy Human Rights Day. Uh, the fifth meeting of the Economic and Social Council at its 2020 session is called to order. Distinguished delegates, as announced in today's journal, the Council will hold elections to fill regular vacancies in the Executive Board of the United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and Empowerment of Women, UN Women, as well as outstanding vacancies in a number of its subsidiary bodies. Subsequently, the Council will take action on a draft resolution submitted under item 12. Excellencies, uh, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I now invite the Council to begin its consideration of agenda item 4, elections, nominations, confirmations and appointments. The documentation before the Council under this item is listed in today's journal. I wish to draw your attention to the list of candidates for today's elections, dated 9 December, which has been circulated in the room and which has also been made available on e-delegate. The Council will take action on the vacancies in order in which they are listed. The elections are being held in accordance with the relevant rules of procedure of the Economic and Social Council on elections and voting namely Rules 63, 68, 69, and 70. First, four members to the Executive Board of the United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and Empowerment of Women, members from the top 10 contributing countries in accordance with paragraph 61A of General Assembly Resolution 64-289 and Council Resolution 2010-35. I now invite the Council to proceed to the election of four seats on the Executive Board of the United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and the Empowerment of Women from candidates from the top 10 voluntary core contributing countries in accordance with paragraph 61A of General Assembly Resolution 64-289 and Council Resolution 2010-35. May I take it that the Council wishes to elect by acclamation Finland, Sweden, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and the United States of America for a term of three years beginning on 1st January 2020. I hear no objection, it is so decided. Uh, next two, with, with regard to the election of the two members from the top 10 voluntary core contributing countries, not members, of the Development Assistance Committee of the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, in accordance with paragraph 61B of General Assembly Resolution 64-289 and Council Resolution 2010-35, three, three candidates have been nominated for the two vacancies, including one received yesterday evening. In order to allow time for ECOSOC members to consider the nominations and for the Secretariat to prepare for an eventual secret ballot, I propose that the Council postpone action on this election until a later date. If there is no objection, the Council will proceed accordingly. The Bureau will inform members as soon as possible about the new election date. I now invite the Council to take action on an outstanding vacancy on the Commission on Population and Development from the Western European and other states. 
May I take it that the Council wishes to elect Turkey by acclamation to the Commission on Population and Development for a four-year term beginning at the first meeting of the Commission's 54th session in 2020 and expiring at the close of the Commission's 57th session in 2024. I hear no objection. It is so decided. May I also take it that the Council decides to further postpone the election of the following outstanding vacancies on the Commission on Population and Development. One, from the Asia-Pacific States, for a term beginning on the date of election and expiring at the close of the 54th session of the Commission in 2021. One, from the African States, and one, from the Asia-Pacific States for a term beginning on the date of election and expiring at the close of the 55th session of the Commission in 2022. And one each from the following, African States, Latin American and Caribbean States, and Western European and other states for a four-year term beginning at the first meeting of the 54th session of the Commission in 2020 and expiring at the close of its 57th session in 2024. I hear no objection. It is so decided. I now uh, invite the Council to take action on three outstanding vacancies on the Commission for Social Development from the Asia-Pacific states and the Latin American and Caribbean states and the Western European and other states. May I take it that the Council wishes to elect Qatar by acclamation to the Commission for Social Development for a term beginning on the date of election and expiring at the close of the Commission's 61st session in 2023 and Paraguay and Turkey by acclamation to the Commission for Social Development for a four-year term beginning at the first meeting of the Commission's 59th session in 2020 and expiring at the close of the Commission's 62nd session in 2024. I hear no objection. May I also take it that the Council decides to further postpone the election of the following outstanding vacancies on the Commission for Social Development. One, from the Western European and other states for a term beginning on the date of election and expiring at the close of the Commission's 58th session in 2020. Two, from the Western European and other states for a term beginning on the date of election and expiring at the close of the Commission's 59th session in 2021. One, from the Asia-Pacific states for a term beginning on the date of election and expiring at the close of the Commission's 61st session in 2023. And one, from the Eastern European states, one, from the Latin American and Caribbean states, and two from the Western European and other states for a four-year term beginning at the first meeting of the Commission's 59th session in 2020 and expiring at the close of the Commission's 62nd session in 2024. I hear no objection. It is so decided. I now <laughs> invite the Council to consider two outstanding vacancies on the Commission on Narcotic Drugs from the African states. May I take it that the Council wishes to elect Egypt and Nigeria by acclamation to the Commission on Narcotic Drugs for a four-year term beginning on 1st January 2020. I hear no objection. It is so decided. Membership of the Commission on Narcotic Drugs is hereby complete. 
I now invite the Council to consider the remaining outstanding vacancy on the Commission on Science and Technology for Development from the Latin American and Caribbean states, as reflected on page 7 of the list of candidates. May I take it that the Council wishes to elect Panama by acclamation to the Commission on Science and Technology for Development for a term beginning on the date of election and expiring on 31st December 2022. I hear no objection. It is so decided. Membership of the Commission on Science and Technology for Development is hereby complete. I now invite the Council to consider two outstanding vacancies on the Intergovernmental Working Group of Experts on International Standards of Accounting and Reporting from the African States and the Asia-Pacific States, as reflected on page 9 of the list of candidates. May I take it that the Council wishes to elect Saudi Arabia and Zimbabwe by acclamation to the Intergovernmental Working Group for a term beginning on the date of election and expiring on 31st December 2020. I hear no objection. It is so decided. In the absence of any other candidates for election to the Intergovernmental Working Group of Experts on International Standards of Accounting and Reporting, may I take it that the Council agrees to further postpone the following outstanding vacancies. One, one member from the Asia-Pacific states, two members from the Latin American and Caribbean states, and seven members from the Western European and other states for a term beginning on the date of election and expiring on 31st December 2020. And one member from African states and one member from Latin American and Caribbean states for a term beginning on the date of election and expiring on 31st December 2021. I hear no objection. It is so decided. I now <laughs> invite the Council to consider two outstanding vacancies on the Program Coordinating Board of the Joint UN Program on HIV AIDS from the Asia Pacific States as reflected on page 11 of the list of candidates. May I take it that the Council wishes to elect India and Thailand by acclamation to the Program Coordinating Board for a three-year term beginning on 1st January 2020. I hear no objection. It is so decided. Membership of the Program Coordinating Board of the Joint UN Program on HIV AIDS is complete. Also, in connection with the Program Coordinating Board of the Joint UN Program on HIV AIDS, for members that were previously elected by the Council from the Western Europe and other states, I would like to inform the Council that Australia and Finland are resigning from their seats on the Program Coordinating Board effective 31st December 2019, and Canada and Denmark have been endorsed by the regional group to assume the resigned seats. May I, <clears throat> therefore, take it that the Council wishes to elect by acclamation Canada and Denmark to complete the term of office of Australia and Finland, respectively, beginning on 1st January 2020 and expiring on 31st December 2020. It is so decided. In accordance with Council Resolution 2020-1, a dedicated management meeting will be held on 15 April 2020 to conduct elections to fill regular and outstanding vacancies in subsidiary bodies of the Council and related bodies. 
I now invite the Council to begin its consideration of Agenda Item 12, Coordination, Coordination Program and Other Questions in order to take action on draft resolution E-2020-L3 slash slash entitled Support to the Sahel Region as submitted by Burkina Faso, Chad, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, and the Republic of Korea on behalf of its co-sponsors. Before we proceed, I wish to consult the Council with a view to continuing to take action on draft resolution L3. The English version of the proposal has been available to delegations since the end of last week. Since the document was issued late last evening in all languages, I propose to waive the relevant provisions of Rule 54 of the Rules of Procedure of the Economic and Social Council, which reads as follows, I quote, unless the Council decides otherwise, proposals and substantive amendments shall be discussed or put to the vote no earlier than 24 hours after copies have been circulated to all members, unquote. Unless I hear any objection, may I take it that the Council agrees with this proposal? It is so decided. I now um, give the floor to the representative in the Chargé d'Affaires of Burkina Faso to introduce the draft resolution on behalf of the main co-sponsors. You have the floor, sir. Madame. Oh, madam. I apologize. You have the floor, madam. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, Mr. President of ECOSAC, distinguished delegates, it is a genuine pleasure for Burkina Faso to present the draft resolution on the Sahel on behalf of the groups of the Sahel, uh, the group of countries of the Sahel in, in uh, general, and the G5 Sahel in particular, as well as the co-sponsors of the resolution. This is a resolution that aligns with the momentum that has been generated by countries of the Sahel and the United Nations. Initially, through the security facet, with the adoption of a number of resolutions by the Security Council for the establishment of the joint G5 Sahel force, the purpose of this force is to counter terrorism and illicit trafficking in the Sahel. Uh, secondly, the uh, issuance and the tabling of this draft ECOSAC resolution is geared towards incorporating the development side into support provided by the international community to the Sahel. Indeed, we all are aware of the following. Development, peace, and security, and human rights are inextricably linked and even interdependent. Mr. President, distinguished delegates, the draft resolution tabled for adoption is a reminder of the tremendous security, humanitarian development challenges. These challenges are invoked, challenges faced by the Sahel. This resolution stresses the need for national and regional ownership and the resolution commends the Sahel states and regional and sub-regional organizations such as the African Union, ECOWAS, and the G5 Sahel commends them for their commitment to tackle the multidimensional crisis gripping the Sahel. The resolution reflects the efforts undertaken under the integrated United Nations strategy for the Sahel. The resolution stresses the need for uh, efforts to be dovetailed under the uh, under Agenda 2030 uh, for Sustainable Development, as well as Agenda 2063 of the African Union and the Security and Development Strategy for the G5 Sahel. The draft resolution also calls upon the Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, relevant bodies of the United Nations, international financial institutions, and uh, 
key stakeholders in the Sahel to better coordinate their support to the region to ensure that there be a greater impact and more efficiency on the ground. Beyond that, the draft resolution underscores the need to step up collective efforts in the Sahel through existing frameworks such as the Priority Investment Program for the G5 Sahel and the African Union Strategy for the Sahel. Moreover, the draft resolution recalls sustainable development goals, as well as the numerous meetings held by ECOSOC and the Peace Building Commission, meetings focusing on issues related to the Sahel. Sir, distinguished delegates, in light of the grave crisis gripping the Sahel, uh, the ability to provide opportunities to people, specifically young people and women, is an important step forward, a step towards sustainable development in the region. Security policies uh, may not incorporate, if, if the security policies fail to incorporate development issues, those policies will fail to achieve the goal set out. For this reason, the whole of the United Nations and other stakeholders would be well advised to act in a concerted holistic way. Holistic way. This is the goal set out in the draft resolution initiated by the G5 Sahel countries, namely Burkina Faso, Niger, Mali, Mauritania, and Chad, with support and co-facilitation provided by the Republic of Korea. I wish on behalf of the G5 Sahel states to commend the commitment of the Republic of Korea along our side in seeking to uh, in, in arriving at this resolution. In the same vein, I commend other members and partners of the Sahel for their important and valuable contributions and the flexibility they have demonstrated throughout negotiations. This attests to their support uh, for the brave, innocent people of the Sahel who have for too long paid the heavy price of this crisis. It behooves me to note in conclusion by with uh, uh, words of gratitude to the Secretary of the ECOSOC for the steadfast support and the readiness that has always been shown. To conclude, I cherish the hope that this draft resolution will be adopted by consensus. This uh, is a draft, of, and this, I believe, fully will make a significant impact on the day-to-day -day lives uh, for the people in the Sahel. Thank you. The distinguished representative of Burkina Faso for her statement. Uh, the Council will now take action on the draft resolution entitled Support of the Sahel Region, as contained in document L3. I would like to inform the Council that draft resolution L3 does not entail program budget implications. I give the floor to the se Secretary to read out the additional sponsors who have joined after submission of the draft resolution. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to announce that since the submission of the draft resolution and in addition to those delegations listed on the L document, the following countries have also become co-sponsors of L3. Benin, Central African Republic, China, Ethiopia, Finland, Ghana, Guinea, Ireland, Italy, Mexico, Nigeria, Paraguay, Romania, Saudi Arabia, Spain, Sweden, Turkey, and the United Kingdom. If any other country wishes to co-sponsor draft resolution L3, please signify by pressing the microphone button. Morocco, Malta, Canada, and Cameroon. That concludes the list of co-sponsors. I also see Venezuela. Venezuela is also a co-sponsor. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, ma'am. You can add Pakistan as a co-sponsor as well. Um, does any delegation wish to make a statement in connection with draft resolution L3? Uh, the distinguished representative of the Republic of Korea. You have the floor, sir. Thank you. Mr. Vice 
President. As the co-facilitator of this resolution, together with the G5 Sahel, Korea would like to thank all member states for their constructive engagement and strong support. Our special thanks goes to the Deputy Secretary General, the Secretariat, DCO, UNDP, and other UN agencies for their valuable advice. And more importantly, we'd like to congratulate our co-facilitators, the G5 Sahel, for their strong leadership in moving this resolution forward. Mr. Vice President, the adoption of today's resolution by consensus shows the member states' strong solidarity behind the Sahel region, which is currently facing unprecedented challenges. As we all know, the interplay of security and development factors, ranging from violent extremism and terrorism, lack of economic opportunities, climate change, and governance, has been destabilizing the region. Addressing these challenges in an integrated and holistic manner is critical. As the Security Council continues to deliberate on the security aspects of this region, it would also be important for ECOSOC to consider how the UN development system can address the root causes of the instability in the region. In this regard, in our view, ECOSOC has taken a meaningful step today by adopting this resolution by consensus. Going forward, the implementation of this resolution would be even more important, and we look forward to working with all of you towards this end. I thank you. I thank uh, the distinguished uh, Ambassador of the uh, Republic of Korea. Um, are there any other delegations wishing to speak before the, the decision? If not, may I take it that the Council wishes to adopt Draft Resolution L3? I hear no. I hear no objection. Draft Resolution L3 is adopted. Does any delegation wish to make a statement after the adoption of Draft Resolution L3? Uh, the distinguished representative of Japan has the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we would like to thank the pen holder, the Republic of Korea, and the co-facilitators, Mali and Burkina Faso, representing the G5 Sahel countries, for their leadership in addressing critical challenges facing the region. Japan is pleased to join many others in co-sponsoring this important resolution. We believe this resolution sends a clear message to the G5 Sahel countries, the UN entities including UNOAS, regional and sub-regional organizations, and all other development partners calling for greater coherence and a sense of urgency in the delivery of United Nations integrated strategy for the Sahel and the UN support plan for the Sahel. In the past years, the region witnessed appreciable progress in the area of peaceful transfers of power. However, the overall trends in security and development have been more and more concerning. Mr. President, Given its multidimensional nature of the challenges facing the region, concerted and coordinated interventions are an integral part for the implementation of UNISS and the UN Support Plan for Sahel. We took note with appreciation of the remarks you made during the meeting of ECOSOC and the Peace Building Commission on the cross-border transhumane in West Africa and the Sahel held last week. In the strategic review of the United Nations Office for West Africa and the Sahel presented last month, there is a reference to a lack of clarity with regards to the roles and responsibilities within the UN leadership on the implementation of the UNISS 
which has undermined effective collaboration with the G5 Sahel. The report also highlights the need for better coordination among the UN system entities. This resolution is a timely reminder of the international community's, community's strong expectations and concerns. We welcome and continued support ECOSOC efforts in guiding the UN system to provide effective collective response to the root causes of the conflicts of the region, including through better coordinated and effective support by the United Nations and other actors. Lastly, I would like to reiterate Japan's commitment to assistance to the G5 Sahel countries. In March, Japan provided 23 million US dollars in humanitarian response funding to G5 Sahel countries. On the margin of the seventh Tokyo International Conference on African Development held in August last year, this year, Japan and the EU Commission jointly organized a special conference on peace and stability in the Sahel region. High-level representatives from 25 countries and organizations affirmed the importance of capacity development and institution, institution building to enhance good governance and to build trust among central and local governments and communities. Furthermore, the participants acknowledged the need to synergize efforts in support of regional initiatives related to security and political challenges and to work in, in an inclusive comprehensive and integrated manner addressing socioeconomic drivers of conflicts. As a ticket seven, Prime Minister Abe announced a new approach for peace and stability in Africa, which is NAPSA. NAPSA will support African-led efforts of conflict prevention, mediation, and arbitrage, as well as their institutional building in order to address the root causes of conflicts and terrorism. We stand firmly with the international community and continue to provide vital assistance for peace and stability and sustainable, sustainable development, especially in the area of capacity development in order to unleash the high potential of the region. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Japan for his statement. Does any other delegation wish to make a statement? That does not seem to be the case. Distinguished delegates, we have thus completed our program of work for this meeting of the Council. I thank all delegations for your participation in our meeting today. Uh, since this may well be the last meeting of the Council in 2019, I would like to recognize those members departing the Council as of 31st December namely Andorra, Azerbaijan, Cambodia, Cameroon, Chad, Denmark, Eswatini, Romania, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Turkey, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and Yemen. I thank each of these members for their participation over the last years. As we approach the end of the year, I wish all delegations a happy holidays and a restful vacation. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>